Good morning. Welcome to the morning chat where I tell you what's on my mind in the morning time. Child, no morning announcements. I honestly, to be honest with you, I really don't have a dang on thing to talk to you about. Um, I actually had the, again, a wonderful, peaceful sleep. I got up, cooked my breakfast. Thank God for being alive. I'm just counting down to my vacation. Really, today, today I am counting down to my vacation. Now, as y'all know, that this is just going to be, uh, a bit of a mukbang because I have to have my breakfast in the morning because I'm old. <laughs> well, I'm not that old, but I'm I'm at the age where I have to take better care of myself and breakfast. They say is the most important um, meal of the day. Now, I can say this, though. Um... When I do have a good breakfast, I'm usually not hungry until I'm getting home. If I, I mean, it doesn't have to be a big breakfast. It just has to be a breaking of the fast. So, I'm not eating all night long. So, thank you, Lord, for breakfast. This is the last of the saucers. <laughs> now, it might be short, but usually when I say I don't got nothing to talk about, um, God always gives me some type of subject and I just ramble on into whatever I need to talk about. So, again, let me just remind you, next week, Morning Chats will be pre-recorded and then posted to my YouTube page. I have some things to do. And places to go, honey. So. Um. Ooh, excuse me. That sauce was good. I am sad because that was my last little piece, too. That was my last little piece. But, mm, oh, man. Those smoked sausages or those kibasa, kibasi sauces, whatever you want to call them, child, um, are so good. Anyway, so I had my iron pill prepped on top of my cup, but I didn't have the lid closed. So guess what happened? It dropped into my water. So this is iron water that I'm drinking this morning. Hmm. So I guess I'm about to drink all that. That water tastes like pennies. Oh, I, I would have poured that out, but that's that good spring water. <laughs> Ooh. My doctor said it best, my iron pill is best dissolved in orange, orange juice. I'm like, well, why don't I just get oranges? Okay, because when you drink the juice of a fruit, you're really just getting the fructose and you're not getting the fiber to help with digestion and all the other um, minerals and stuff that you get in if you eat fruit. So I don't really like eating oranges, just straight oranges. Or sometimes it's just like either I like it or it's like, mm. 
it's on and off. I don't really eat, drink a lot of orange juice unless it's in a cocktail. I'm going to tell keep it 100 with you. There you go. I tell you, I spill every time. So, you know, um, I thought for a minute, but I didn't do much research on on the subject I, I was thinking about. But I'm gonna try to do it in this in the next 15 minutes online while I'm here. So. We're going to talk politics. Oh, let me finish my thought when I said my, my doctor said that my iron pill dissolves best in orange juice. This is that I know it's high sugar, but if that helps you take your iron pill. So I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, again, I don't really like eating oranges. And I don't drink orange juice unless it is in a cocktail. I mean, I'm just keeping it 100. Y'all forgive me. Pretty much. I mean, I just don't go around drinking orange juice. Now, I will. Sometimes I, you know, whenever that craving comes up, I might say, you know, let me give me some orange juice. Um, but that's rare. But I love some pink grapefruits. Now, this grapefruit ain't very pink. But it's not that yellow grape. The yellow grapefruit is like kill yourself. I don't even know why. Even why are you eating it? I mean, now some people like it. Some people like it, but the pink grapefruit is just a smidget more sweeter. So I figure if it if my iron would dissolve good with oranges or orange juice, then it'll do the same with a fruit that's in the same family. A grapefruit plus I get the grapefruit I get the fiber from eating it I do the half um, grapefruit um, and it'll dissolve in there but apparently it dissolved very well into my water because I couldn't go and get a spoon to dig it out before the pill just disintegrated into my water. Mm. Um, so yeah. So now I'm have to wash my according to a car cup that's available online. Also, another thing, how about that? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get into this this topic that I want to talk about. Um, but Oh, my thought process. I did that yesterday. Oh, I need to get me some ginkgo biloba. Oh, goodness. The fact that I don't have, I, I don't have nothing major to talk about, nothing on my mind in the morning time is rare because I'm usually overthinking it. Now, there is some things that I, I mean, I ain't going to say I don't have no thoughts, okay, but it ain't for you, you know, and some of it, and some of my thoughts isn't my story to tell. You know, and other ones, well, you know, you know, so, um, dang it, I must have, maybe I need to go back to bed. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so let me just go on to, because I'm trying to drink all this water since all of my iron pill dissolved in this water. Um, but I'm going to drink my coffee in my According to Akara mug, available on accordingtoakara.springs.com. Um, I want to talk about... Democrats. Yeah, let's talk politics just for a few minutes 
just for just just for a little bit, just for a little bit, the Democratic Party. When did that become the Black Part a uh, political party? You know what I mean. The Black People's Pe um, Democratic Party. Let's look it up on my handy dandy computer. You know, I was listening to one of my morning chats. Yes, I listen to myself. I do listen to myself. And I like myself. I'm funny. <laughs> I like myself. I am funny. Okay. I said I'm funny. Don't make me give you this knuckle sandwich. I'm funny. Anyway, um, yeah, that iron water ain't doing the trick. My stomach is already like, girl, girl, is that iron in that water? Why does it taste like? Why does it taste like? Well, my stomach ain't saying. Why does it taste like pennies? My taste buds is like pennies. That part. Um. So the question of the day is: When did the Democrats. How do you spell Democrats, y'all? Dem Democrat Party become become black. Let's see what it says. Okay, showing results for when did the Democratic Party become the black, become Oh, I put that in there. And it said, when did the Democratic Party become switch from red, which we know is the Republican Party to blue. ABC uses yellow for Republicans and blue for Democrats. In 1976, then red for Republicans and blue for Democrats. In the 80s, 1984, 80, in 1988. So it started with television networks. You know, I guess when they when the presidential, the big presidential run came along, that's what color they showed on the maps for a certain state. Let's see. Okay, so the party realigned and the new deal. Okay, time for, how about to say, time for grandma to put on her glasses. I'm not a grandma. It's time for auntie to put on her glasses. <laughs> Woo, okay, the party realigned in a new deal. The realign of black voters from the, re from the Republican Party to the Democratic Party that begun in, in the late 1920s, pro proliferated during the era. Sorry for my bad reading, y'all. This process involved a push and a pull. The refusal by Republicans to, per, to pursue civil rights aligned many black voters while efforts sh sh uh, I'm sorry, shallow through, though they were, though they were, okay, by the Northern Democrats to open opportunities for African Americans gave black voters reason to switch parties. In 1932 presidential contest between incumbent Republican President Herbert Hoover, 
Wasn't he the f FBI? And Democrat Franklin D. Roosevelt were, was something of a turning point. Funny enough. First of all, that was, that got me wanting to know. I thought Herbert Hoover. I didn't know Hoover. I thought Herbert Hoover was over the FBI. Oh, that's J. Edgar Hoover. Okay, that's not the same as the president. Okay. I was like, wait a minute, hold up. Okay. Democrat Franklin Roses was something of a turning point during his first term. Hoover had tried to ingratiate himself with Southern segregationists. And his administration had failed to implement economic policies to help African Americans laid low by the Great Depression. Still, Hoover received between two-thirds and three-quarters of the black vote in northern urban wards. Most black voters sided with Republicans less, Republicans less out of loyalty than because they were, they were, mm, well, I mean, hold on, because they were loath to support a candidate whose Democratic Party had zealously suppressed their political rights in the Southern African American mistrusted FDR because of his party affiliation. His ever sub. Well, I ain't even gonna say that word. I ain't even gonna say that word. Of something about race in the campaign and his choice of running mate, House Speaker John Nance Garner of Texas. As of as late as the mid thirties, African American Republican John R. Lynch, funny. African American Republican, his na last name is Lynch. Have y'all read the Willie Lynch papers? Is he, okay, anyway, moving on. Who had represented Mississippi in the House during, during and after Reconstruction? Um, summed up the sentiment of old black voters and upper middle class professionals. The colored voters cannot help but feel that in voting the Democratic ticket, and national elections, they will be voting to give their endorsement and their approval to every wrong which they were they are victims. Every right of which they are deprived and every injustice in which they have suffered. Illinois' first congr congressional district provides window into the process of black political realignment in northern cities prior to election of Republican Oscar D. Priest in 1928-1930. Okay, so this is going in way more history than I really cared about. Um... I always thought that the switch happened. Sorry, y'all. I always thought the switch happened 
when um I always thought the switch happened during the Martin Luther King era where Democratic Party um, Kennedy, John Kennedy, assisted Martin Luther King in you know, when he wrote to him about, you know, the injustice that was going on, you know, so on and so forth. And John F. Kennedy helped out with the promise while he was running, helped him out. He promised the, the black voters. That's what I always believe. But apparently, um, this whole pool to get black people inundated, well not inundated, but more on one party than the other, okay, has started way back in the 30s. Interesting. Um, or black people being more involved. Now, get your history, get out there, find books. I suggest the, 19, uh, the 1619 Project chock full of black history um of tells you about reconstruction where you know black people were running things after and during the reconstruction for a short period of time before old poor white men these weren't the rich men the rich didn't care and then y'all gotta get this i want y'all to understand this the most racist person in America is a poor white man. Okay, against black people. Because he doesn't understand. He's white. He's, he, he has been told from birth since when slavery in from, from the 1800s when they started bringing slaves over, white people, white men especially, have been told that they are better than blacks just because they're white, just because they're Caucasian, okay? And every time a new group of white-looking, lighter-skinned people came to this country, they diss them too. You're not American. You're not American. You're Italian. Go, go, go eat your spaghetti and pizza and that nasty food that you eat, right? Until they started aligning with black people and then said, but no, you're white. You're Italian, but you're white. Come over here. You're still better than them black people, right? The most racist person is African. I mean, is is white men. Okay, not African. I, well, they might be racist too. You know, Africans in Africa that you know they think they're better than us black people that was broken and became slave, and we allow certain things to happen to us. They probably agreed with Kanye when he said that. Slavery was a choice. Why'd you, why didn't you take over? Manduku cried. I, I made that up. You know, you are warriors. How can you allow a pale faced man, weakly, to subdue you? You are kings. You are queens. And you allowed them to subdue you. I wouldn't be surprised. Some old tribe, that, that's probably how they feel. It's like you let them subdue you. And then the tribe that sold us, thinking that they didn't think they, they were doing what they, I, I really don't believe they were knew what they were doing when they sold our people. Like, well, black Africans were the one who sold us to the, not all the time. 
they probably, you know, they, they had a war with another tribe. They got their people. They have too much to feed. They gave the gave the the the, the people that they gained from the other tribe to the pale faced men that was on you know what I'm saying? Or they probably did it so that they wouldn't take them. You know what I'm saying? They made a good penny off of us. You know what I'm saying? That it was business to them. It wasn't I'm gonna send you over and have you broken and treat it like shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure they weren't thinking. And I mean, if we were slave, I mean, if we were conquered, we were weaklings anyway. If we were a tribe that got conquered by another tribe, we'd probably be a little weak. Anyway, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Actually, I would say that the ones that they caught, they, we were just our tribe. And there's so much, okay. Y'all not going to like me. And I'll probably become popular. I'll go viral now. I say, Do you hear this stupidity this girl said? But think about it. Our ancestors, us black people that are here, if we truly are from Africa, our ancestors are from the motherland. Okay? They got the weakest one. The white man that came over and took us from the land that got the weakest ones. Well, they came over here with no, that was the natives where they did the 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 um, germ warfare. Okay, they came over here with guns and no, they hid. If if we believe roots to be a true story, he didn't just go into they didn't just go into a trial point gun and say, come with us. Okay. They hid and they caught a ninja slipping. They didn't make an agreement with I mean we're just going to take, a, you know, just this, just a few people over there. Over here real quick. We'll bring them back when we're done. They didn't, they didn't borrow us from Africa. They took us. In order to be kidnapped, you have to be caught slipping. Right? Right? Were we not stolen from our land? So that means whatever tribe of people was slipping. Whether it be that our tribe was defeated by another tribe and they sold us to the pale faced man. Okay. We still were slipping. We still weren't strong. Okay. So the people that's made it to America, we've already know that they didn't bring them straight to America. Well, maybe at first, but as the slave trade began to come to pass, they would drop, we, they stopped in at the islands to break the ones that survived the middle passage. And the ones that broke, weak. They brought to America the ones that was just a wild black stallion out there, and they just were hard to break. They were just hard headed. They just wasn't going to do it, no matter how much you whip them, no matter how much you put them in these cells. They were not going to be broken. They stayed in the Caribbean. Okay, that is why. Most Caribbean blacks are a little more rambunctious than we here in America. Okay. Even Haiti. They got their, those black people fought and won. Kind of. So they couldn't win physically, so they got, so France got them financially bind up as a slave. You understand?
but all the blacks here, we were broken. We were weak. We were ones that stayed in slavery. We conformed. That's what we did. So, mm, slavery wasn't a choice, but we sure enough was chosen to be the, the slaves that's here. You understand what I'm saying? Because we were easily broken. That's why there hasn't been no uproar here in America. Like, we ain't taking it no more. You shoot one more of our brothers, we going to shoot back. We just going to have to have this all and out war. Okay? All out complete war. Because we're not taking it no more. No. That's why we have contention between us. We were broken to be what we are today. We are. We come from a weakness in our people. Don't like me. You don't have to. I'm not that big. I, you know. Now, I think that once you realize that's what it is, Okay, because we work, we fight against ourselves. I would have a ton of people. Oh, we not weak. We not weak. Then why the hell do we put up with the shit that we've been treated? Why do we deal with it? Why don't we shoot back? War, all our war. That's what. You when they say they are when white people say that they are scared of black people, they are afraid of the day that we when it clicks to all of us that they're not better than us, they're not stronger than us, we can win this. When the brainwashing stops and we really wake up. Because there's a lot of fake woke people. There's a lot of fake woke. They talk all this king and queen and all this stuff. Nigga, first of all, stop that bullshit. I'm going to tell you right now, all of us was not kings and queens. Okay? Some of us was happy goat herders. Happy families. Happy uh, farmers. Uh, uh uh, what they call it, what's the fancy word for farmers, agriculturalists, scientists. We weren't all kings and queens, my dear. Some of us were court jesters. We were the funny men. Some of us was medicine men, but we weren't all kings and queens. Stop calling each other king and queen. Y'all sound stupid and fake woke. You sound stupid and fake woke. You still sound stupid. Hey, king. Hey, queen. Just call me. How you doing, woman? And treat me with respect. That's what you do. You respect my difference. Don't try to treat me just like you. I'm not a, I'm not a man. I am a whole woman. And I need help. And yes, can you open that door for me? And yes, can you carry my bags upstairs? Or if I say, I got it, just let me have it. Okay? But when I ask for help, just help me. Respect my difference. Respect that I am emotional. That there is a power in being emotional because that means I'm emotionally intelligent. And I could tell you a little something, men, black men. I'm talking to you. I ain't talking about every man. Respect my difference. Stop complaining. They're so emotional. They don't make any sense. They're not logical. I'm not made here to be logical. I'm made here to be emotionally, give you some emotional intelligence as a woman. To have you think outside of the box. A little different.
We're more than a vagina and a baby making machine, okay? And baby feeders. We're more than a, a crybaby. And complaining. And we are complex. Stop complaining about it and learn to understand one woman. Stop trying to understand all women. Understand the woman you want to be with. Okay? If you have a wife, understand her. You don't need to understand all women. Get your fuck off of YouTube. Okay? Or wherever else you get your knowledge from Instagram and social media of men talking about they understand women. A man that understands women understands that he don't understand. And it's a daily thing. And he can say he knows his wife. He can say, I understand my wife. Okay, I understand my main girlfriend or the person I've been with for 10 years. I understand her. Okay, but you don't understand me because you understand her. Because what she likes, I don't. And that's when I know when a man is a complete idiot, when he says, I understand women. No, you don't. You know, I, you understand women enough to manipulate them. You think you understand women. You understand if you was raised around all women with your mama and your auntie and your grandma, you understand them. Okay? You don't understand me. Okay? But don't, that's when I know you're young and you're stupid when you're going on YouTube pages and you don't have a father that taught you. Look, just understand the one woman in your life, the one you want to be with. Okay? That's all. You study her. But you don't have daddies in your lives and your mamas don't. I don't know. I raised a, a son. Okay? And. My son knows me, but he doesn't know his girlfriend. He doesn't know where she, you know, he's learning her, but he does that stupid mess. Go on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, men is going to talk to your soul because they're men and they're just as fucking confused about women as you are. So, yes, they're going to speak to your soul. But understand that they still don't understand women. And you ask me, but I'm telling, but you then you're steady telling me what you heard on YouTube. By a man. Who's not a woman. But at any rate. So you're not going to understand why we do what we do until you understand you understand that one for one. Just work on one. Work on one. Start listening to what she says she wants. And when you give her what she wants, exactly what she wants. Not your version of what she wants. Because that's where y'all get where I gave her what she wanted. She, she wanted monogamy. Okay. So I didn't fuck with no other women. Okay, but did you flirt with them? Did did you take the time that you would have been fucking with other women and put it towards her though? And that's why you say, but she's still uh, she's still not happy. Well, because you're doing it just because it is a mandate of hers instead of I want to be with you. I don't have time to be messing around with other women. I'm still trying to understand you. And that's different. See, it's the part that there's parts of it that you're not listening to, you're not paying attention to. You're not even praying about and asking God, like, what what does she mean by that? She okay, I gave her monogamy, she's still upset. And God might tell you, well, did you use that time that you weren't messing with other women and focus on her?
you might notice that when he doesn't, he he doesn't. And every time y'all talk about women throwing stuff in your face, but men, y'all do it too. I did this and I did that. And you still not happy. Well, did you want to do it? Or are you just doing it so that I won't fuss with you? That part. That part right there. That part. I told you, every time I come on here and I ain't got nothing to talk about, I always end up with something. God always leads me down that road. I don't know what I'm going to label this. Random talk. Uh, I was with Let's Talk Politics, but this sure enough went into a lesson to about men understanding women and respecting us and slavery and the whole thing. It's kind of crazy. So I guess this is just going to be a random talk. Just a random talk. We were, I, I tell you, you give me some time. See, I haven't been on here for a whole 45 minutes. Anyway, that's all I have for you right now. I, I have a whole nother 30 minutes for y'all going on talking about that. But anyway, maybe I'll do that on, on single and satisfied. Anyway, y'all have a wonderful Wednesday. It's hump day, y'all. Remember, love yourself. Love your neighbor and go to Facebook to get the recap and my road, my driving commentation on some of these drivers here in this Atlanta city. <laughs> All right. Y'all have a good one. Bye.